the folks watching these videos has read Crisis of Conscience? Obviously, to most witnesses, reading that book is the equivalent of reading Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible. For the benefit of those who haven't read the book, I'm going to give a brief synopsis of a more extreme case which serves as the basis of my next question. However, I'm going to relate it to otherwise more reasonable examples that you might have seen in person. For those who have read Christ of the Conscience, I'm sure you're going to remember this experience. Ray Franz, the author of the book, served on the governing body for years. While on the governing body, letters from local congregations with difficult problems were brought to his attention. One such case involved a woman who wanted to divorce her husband, who was an avid practitioner of bestiality. The problem here was that, scripturally, that wasn't a reason for divorce. Fornication was. Technically, because he was having sex with animals, he was not committing fornication. Obviously, a pretty sickening trait that would more than likely cause someone to no longer want to be married to a person with such a trait. The official decision was she could indeed separate from her husband, but she couldn't officially divorce him until he actually committed fornication. If she married someone else, she would then be guilty of fornication. I purposely picked an extreme case to really show how this could be a problem. The only scriptural grounds for divorce is fornication. Are there no other serious reasons why someone would want to file for divorce? I mean, what if someone's spouse had a serious drug addiction? This would not only affect the marriage itself, but it could affect the health of the spouse and the health of any children if they have them. No one want their children in such an environment, but scripturally, they're bound to their spouse. They could leave the spouse, but would not be able to marry into better circumstances. What if the spouse was physically abusive? The children or the spouse could be in danger of their lives. Yet still, scripturally, they're bound to their spouse. What if the spouse was an alcoholic? This is another case where lives could be in danger. What if the spouse revealed they were homosexual, and while they did not carry on any homosexual relationships, the marriage was completely loveless and totally meaningless? Tough question number 34 is, why can't extenuating circumstances be brought into an account when filing for divorce? D -I -V.